Hello everyone, welcome to Final Element Method tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to use Abacus to simulate the fracture mechanics and obtain the energy release rate. <clears throat> so here's our problem statement. There's a plate of 10 by 10 inches and there's a crack in the middle of the plate. Since the geometry is symmetric, we only simulate half of the plate and the half crack length is 0.1 inches and the thickness of the plate is 1 inches. Material property is 10 mega psi and Poisson ratio 0.3. The plate is under a tension of 2,000 psi on the direction, at the direction of the mole 1 crack opening. And we're going to use two methods to obtain the energy release rate, first by the J contour integral. The second method is by the <clears throat> strain energy derivative. So we roughly estimate the derivative as the, uh, by adding a small change of the crack and then compute the deviation of the strain, total strain energy. And let's see how do we, apply the abacus analysis. Create a part, 3D shell uh, plate. So total length 20 and half of the thickness. So it should be zero minus five to five, five. So this will give you a five by 10 uh, plate. And material property is uh, elastic material property. Young's module is 10 E6 uh, PSI for Sun's ratio 0.3. So assign the section, shell element, and then homo homogeneous, and the thickness is one inches. And then assign the section. We don't need to create set down. Assembling, create an instant, independent. And now we need to put it, uh, create a crack in the plate. And also for further, uh, for better mesh the plate, we need to partition the surface. Use this tools and select the right edge. And before we actually do that, we can create some point here. First point is this point. Second point is this point. Now we can create a construction line for later better to do our, draw our sketch. One is horizontal, one is vertical. Now we can draw our crack. Our crack should start from the very left end and extend by a mount and use the dimension tool to control the length. This should be 0.1. And then we need to draw the contour circle. So to draw the contour circle, we select this end and select another end on the horizontal construction line. Please make sure that your circle, the second point is on the construction line for later, uh, so that later it's easier to make partition. So now use the dimension tour. Let's make a 0 0.02 in radius. So this will be our contour line. <clears throat> so we make another circle. Again, your second point should be on the horizontal construction line. And make the radius of this 0.4. So this is just for mesh. Later when you do the meshing, mesh of the plate, the circle will make your mesh looks better. And then 
for the we draw a rectangular just for mesh. So use the dimension tools. So this line and this line, the dimension for this, let's just make it 0 0.06. Similarly, this, let's also make it 0 0.06. And then the distance between the very right end and the first construction line, let's make it 0 .0, uh, 0.2. Oh, sorry, point two. So then from this rectangular box, we draw the line that is vertical to the entire plane, just for plotting. All the way to the end, you sh it should show a V here, means it's vertical. And click end and then use this again, joining this point and some point on the top and make sure that it's vertical. Once it's done, you should obtain some geometry like this. Oh, sorry, I haven't finished the sketch. So if you want to change your sketch, uh, go to your partition, assembling features, Partition, select sketch, and then one thing we haven't done is we need to finish this line from the center of the circle all the way to the end of this line. And since you create a thing, you can right click the features, click regenerate. You see that the circle was cut into half. And this is the shape we need for assembly. Then the step, we create a step of general static. The increment, we can do just 10 increment and increment size 0.1 and make it fix. <clears throat> and then in your uh, field output, originally you have a lot of field output but here, since we are not focusing on field output, probably we just need the one means of stress and the displacement, U. History output is what we need. So we can create a history output here, which should be related to energy and inside the energy, choose the ALLIE, which is total strain energy. And uh, originally, we unclick the energy. Instead of energy, we will select the crack. Oh, we haven't created a crack yet, so we'll go back to the crack first and then assign the history output. So in interaction, zoom in a little bit, in your special crack, assign scene and select the one three part that you assign, uh, assume that is a is your crack. After you click the down button, you should have a dark line here. In your special crack, create the crack from contour integral. Select the integration area. So select the top and bottom circle. And then select the crack tip, which is the center of your crack. And then uh, use a Q vector for the propagation direction. So your crack propagation direction is pointing to the right. So you see a blue arrow pointing to the right. And then in your singularity, since we are doing only linear material property, linear analysis, so we do elastic analysis, so we make it 0.25. If you do plastic, you can make it 0.5. And then single node collects element side. <clears throat> now you have the crack, go back to your step, and in your history, out history output, the first output, uh, instead of energy, we select the crack here. And 
uh, crack one n, and then number of contour make it three, and choose a j integral here. So then we can go to the low part. First, we need to assign symmetric boundary condition. So in your initial symmetri symmetric, select the left boundary. Hold shift, select all of that. And select the X symmetry. Then is the applying the load. In your step one, create a shell edge loading. Select the top surface. Uh, we can use the by angle and then select the bottom and the top so that you don't need to select four part. You just need to select two parts. And the magnitude, since the shell edge loading is kind of the same as pre uh, com uh, the pressure. So if you want tension, you need to enter minus two thousand here. And the traction is defined on the undeformed length. If you see the arrow is pointing outside the plane, then it's okay. Then it's good. Then go to the mesh part. So first select this three region, because this three region is just rectangle, so you can assign that as structure. And uh and then select the, this four region. This four region are all circular region, so we can assign that as sweep. And the rest is the red region is actually between the circular and rectangle, so you cannot use either stru structure or swap for that, so we just leave it free. Now assign global seed. Global C, we put 1.1 inches long. We can see the seed for the circle is too coarse because near the crack tip, we want it to be very accurate and more element. So we assign use by age angle instead of individual. <clears throat> and then choose the outer circle and the inner circle. And select by number instead of four, we actually make it 10. So it'd be way finer here. Also select this, uh, instead of by angle, let's change it back to individual now. So select this portion, hold shift, this portion, this portion, and this portion. This four portion should be at the same length. And we can make it by number and change it to five. So that near the crack tip is pretty fine. Now we can draw the mesh. You can see near the crack tip and around the crack tip is actually has way more almond than outside the region. So now we can go to our job and call it plate one. and submit. It, it doesn't take long time since this is just a 2D element. So while it's running, we can go back and change our model. As long as you see the input file was written, then it's good to change whatever you want. So now, go back to your features, partition face and sketch. Now we need to, for the second method, we need to increase the crack by 0.02 inches, which means uh, the value we enter here instead of 0.1, we, we can delete that. Uh, oh, we actually can select that. And make it closer to the surface, yeah. 
And you can see that it represents this length. And instead of point 0.1 here, uh, we actually, uh, we can delete this one and then redo this dimensions. And we make it 0.12. So 2, 0.2, 0 0.02 millimeter, uh, sorry, 0 0.02 inches more than previously. You can see the circle is moving to the right. And then click down. And then in your features, right click and regenerate the result. And it should be here now. Now since your mesh, since your partition has changed, so everything need to be reassigned. Let's go to the crack first. Assign the scene. Scene is automatically assigned from the beginning to the center of the circle. And then in your crack, you can see uh, everything is correctly assigned. Your crack is here, your crack tick is here, and your pointing direction is to the right. That means for your crack, you don't need to change anything. And let's check this, uh, all the steps. The steps should be fine, and the output also should be fine. And your load, symmetric, and the force is also applied correctly. The only thing that matters is the mesh. So you need to assign the mesh again. Now it moves to the right a little bit. So everything is fine. Go to your job, create a new one, call it play two. and then submit the result. And now we can see the plate one result. Let's see the stress first, one meter stress. You can see the one meter stress distribution, the stress concentration area, the butterfly uh, shape of stress, and the crack opening. You can see here is still a little bit coarse. If you want it to look better, you can make a finer mesh for this part. Here I just want to save the end computational end power. So if you feel like your result offset a lot, you can make it finer. So to show the result, go to your XY data and create a data from the history output can see that we have the J integral here and we're doing mode one here. You can see the J integral. And to see the value, we can use the Q read and then probe uh, value. Select the ending point, which means the, our value for the J integral is around uh, 0 0.113 here. If you make the mesh finer, I think it will be closer to 0 0.12. <clears throat> and let's see from the other from the other direction if you see the energy, what's the result? So here you can see the energy, total energy. Again we use a probe value for that. And it gives you 10 Point zero zero six one, ten point zero zero six one. We just use calculator to remember that value. Now we can see, go back to see the one that is has point oh two inches increment in the crack. So here we create the XY data from history output and let's plot the energy. And then again, probe value uh, for the ending point. This is 0 0.0086. 
So previously is 0 0.0061, and that is 0.0086. So we have uh, 10.0086 minus 10.0061. And this value divide by, according to the formula, divide by the increment of the crack, which is 0 0.02. Uh, uh, sorry, this calculator will follow the follow the uh, won't follow the algorithm rule. So we do zero point zero zero two five divided by uh, zero point zero two. So it's zero point one two five. So it's very close to the previous one. Zero point one two five should be a correct value. So. But our J integral is a little bit offset. So let's see if we find the mesh, whether we can change it back or not. So go back to assembling as I, the same as what I, we did before. Uh, here, instead of 0 0.12, uh, we delete this one and redo this dimension. Change it, change it back to 0 .1, 0 0.1 and regenerate the features. And in your mesh, uh, you can see that it's not mesh now, so just mesh it. And we want it to be finer for all the region that is around the crack. So for left and right, we can make it five of that. And for top and bottom, sorry, top and bottom. Hold shift, select top and bottom. We make it 10. And for the middle, for this one and this one, we make it five or even 10, uh, just leave it five. Now we can do the mesh. Now it's finer to previous one. You can see how much you can improve your result. So go back to your job and create another one called plate three. And then submit that. So you can also see the monitor here. Monitor start from 0 0.1 and suddenly go to one. So it's very fast for this analysis. You can try different mesh. So now if you see this, the hole, the opening is more natural, like it follows a natural curve, not like previously is kind of digitized. So if you see XY data, from the field output, oh sorry, from the history output and J integral for the first one and use the probe value for that. You can see 0 0.1247 is very close to the energy derivative result, which is 0 0.125. You can even make this more close to whatever you, uh, more close to the actual solution by finer the mesh. So this is uh, how do you apply abacus
to obtain the energy release rate. Hope that you can, we compare the J integral method and the strain energy uh, deriv uh, derivative method, and both of them shows the same result. And it's the same as theoretical calculation. And the, the only difference is for J contour integral around the crack, the mesh side uh, should be relatively fine to obtain a reasonable result. So that's all for this video. Hope that you can learn something.